Um, so what we're here for tonight, thank you all for coming, by the way. Um, what we're here for tonight is to uh, actually do a promotion ceremony for two of our students who um, have tested for and passed and are being promoted to what we call Chodon, which is uh, Cho, Cho means first, and Don means, Don means degree holder, okay, is actually what it is. So when they're color belts, the uh, different color belts, you're not degree holders, you're gooks, which just means belt holder, okay, um, or rank holder. Don means degree holder. One of the things that we uh, equate this to is um, getting your first don is like graduating from high school. Okay, that's about how much work is put into it. In fact, sometimes there's more work put into the don promotions, into the into the training and everything for this than they actually put in at school. Um, Hopefully, by the time they're, especially by the time they're done, they're, they're, they're realizing how much better they could be in school if they would put that same devotion into their school. That's one of our goals, is to help them be better students as well. Um, so, but, uh, and then second degree black belt, we say is like getting your associate's degree. And then third degree is like getting your bachelor's. And then fourth degree, which is uh, where I'm at, is like getting your master's degree. And then from that, from that point forward, it's uh, further advanced degrees. Um, it takes a minimum of three and a half to four years to go from white belt to black belt. So, you know, you, you can guess how much time they've actually put into this. All right, so what we're going to start with tonight is our two candidates, our two prom promotees, uh, are going to... Uh, Give us a little demonstration of what they had, one of the things that they had to go through to achieve this rank that they're getting promoted to. Um, we do a lot of forms, and uh, an individual form may have anywhere from 20 to 50 something moves in it. Um, one of the things that we make them do on their black belt test, on their Don test, is we make them take a, uh, we actually created a form, we call it the long form, where we actually take six forms and put them together. And uh, they have to do them back to back. In other words, they get to the end of a form, they don't stop, they don't get to the end of the form and stop and go to Chumbi and then rest for a minute. They finish the last move on one form, they immediately go to the next first move on the next form. And there's six forms that they do together. So at 20 moves, uh, tw minimum of 20 moves per form, that's a minimum of 120 movements that they have to do. And they have to remember all of them. Um, it's a test of their memory. It's also a test of their endurance. To make sure that, you know, I mean, if you get, if, if you get in a fight and you have to use your tongue to do, is a good possibility that that's not going to be over in, in, in 20 seconds. Okay, especially if you get in a situation where you've got, you're having to protect yourself against a bunch of people. That could last a little while. Your endurance has to be up there so that you can last through the whole fight and not get killed. Okay? So that's, hopefully that's not what happens. Um, so we do this as a test of endurance as well as a test of, of memory uh, really it's, it's a test of muscle memory to see if they've done these forms enough by themselves that they can do them and move from one to the other without think, having to give it much thought. So they're going to demonstrate that for us. Um, and then uh, the, these guys here up front, they don't know it, but they're going to do some demonstrations tonight too. We're just going to do uh, some, some line drills. Um, it's, it's, to, uh, it's time filler. Uh, we're going to do a few line drills as a demonstration, and then we'll get right to the actual tying on of the belts and the promotions. Okay? So without further ado, let me introduce... Oh, you're going to read for them? Okay. 
Let me introduce Scott Gilden, who is our senior red belt. Where we, are you? You're going to want to be facing this way, right? Coming towards, so you might want to come over this, back here. And Sayla Graves, who is our second most senior red belt. All right, and they're going to perform what we call the log form, which is a combination of our basic form number three plus five of our Pyongan forms, which, what does Pyongan stand for? Anybody tell me? I forgot. Peaceful confidence is what Pyongan stands for. All right, so. Southern, do you want to explain what I'm going to be doing? Oh, um, while they're performing this form, uh, Ms. Christina is going to uh, be reading some things that the kids themselves have wrote uh, about their, hopefully, about their journey to, talk, to, to Black Belt in Tongsu Do, and uh, with some special thank yous to people who have helped them get there. And uh, just, it's kind of a little mini biography about them, okay? So, whenever you're ready, guys, you want to take your mask off while you do this? Be easier for you. It's a long form. Don't even affect it. You get the command whenever you're ready. You're the she senior, Scott. She dropped. Scott Gilman. When I was seven years old, my parents talked to me about doing some sort of extracurricular activity. For a while, I had thought about doing martial arts. Would be cool. Yep. So when they asked me what I wanted to do, my first suggestion was to do martial arts. I participated in a trial lesson and decided I wanted to train in Tong Sudo. When I started as a white yeah. belt four years ago, I felt very nervous to go to class. I wasn't very flexible, I didn't have good balance, and I couldn't do a side kick. Four years later, my side kicks still aren't the greatest. Although I was nervous, I stuck with it and my training paid off. Six months later, I became an orange belt and moved yeah. from the beginner class to the advanced class. That was the drive I needed to keep me going. From there, I kept training and practicing until I became a first rep and participated in my first tournament where I broke my first board and yeah. flying sidekick. It didn't quite occur to me at the time, but over a year later, I was tested for black belt and passed. For me, there was never a specific moment when I decided I was going to be a black belt no matter what. Yeah. Instead, it built up slowly over time as I got older and realized the meaning behind being yeah. a black belt. Being a black belt has given me a sense of accomplishment and helped me realize that I have the strength to push through the hardest of things in life to achieve what I want. Tang Sudo has given me confidence, discipline, perseverance, and has made me a better person physically and mentally. Yep. Finally, I would like to thank my family, my friends, and my Sabanin as they have all helped me reach this amazing goal. Say yep. grace. I think whenever I started Tang Sudo, I yep. felt confident and like I could already be a black belt. But I was also nervous and found some things hard to understand and learn. You know that feeling, looking back at your past self, when you were scared of something? Yep. And then you overcame that fear and looked back thinking, how could I have been scared of something like this? Yep. Yep. That's how it feels now. There was a time where it didn't feel very fun because everyone kept pushing me to do better. I would even find excuses to get out of going to train. But in Tom Sudo, I've learned how to be more respectful, even though I know sometimes yep. I'm not. And I've gained more confidence. I've trained in forms, I'm sparring for tournaments, and I have felt proud when I placed and earned medals. I also have a few new goals as a black belt, like the yep. towards yep. my Edom, meddling in tournaments as a black belt, yep. and finally nailing one step foot number 27. So thank you, Mom. Thank you, Dad. And thank you, Sabina. I also want to thank Tommy, yep. Scott, Isaac, Lucy, and Jackson for helping train me. Anybody see any mistakes? <laughs> <laughs> I did too. 
do that. I'm not going to tell you what they were. Uh, that is a very that is a very grueling form to have to go through. Um, I think that might have even been better than what you did on your test. Okay. You key up in the right place. Uh, which you, that's, that seems to be the hardest thing for people to remember to do is to key up when they're doing their forms. Um, <clears throat> and there are certain places where we were supposed to key up to which gives emphasis to certain movements in the forms. Uh, they're not the only places we could key off, which is when we're doing forms, it's kind of like a dance. So, you know, it's certain things you're supposed to do in certain places. Good job, guys. Um, so, I, I'm going to dismiss them for just, for just a little bit, and the rest of us here are going to demonstrate some, uh, some line drill techniques that, that we do on a daily, regular basis in class. Okay? I gotta be a free. a lot of stuff when they when they do their their form and, and the parent whoever the parent is that's reading the vignette reads some of the stuff that they write and I'm like oh yeah they forgot about that um, I remember him being not very well coordinated <laughs> um, and um, sometimes getting frustrated especially because he somewhat of a perfectionist with himself and when he doesn't get something right he gets upset with himself um, but he never gave up never and no matter what kind of corrections I made to him sometimes I had to make those corrections more than once some of them I'm still making <laughs> Okay, but that's okay, because you know what? It's like I tell them, I'm not perfect. You're not perfect. Nobody's perfect. Okay, nobody's going to be able to do this stuff perfectly. Um, but I'm proud of Scott for something else as well, and that is the role model, the Tung Sudo role model that he has been for the other students. And specifically for his little sister. Uh, when Scott started with me as a white belt, shortly after he started, his little sister started in my Karate Tots program, my four and five year olds. Um, and for those of you who don't know it, the little red belt girl that was just up here, that's his little sister. She's a red belt now. She's within a year or a little more than a year, maybe two years, of testing for her black belt. And uh, a lot of that is because of the work that he has done with her. Right, Lucy? Yes, sir. Uh, these guys practice together. And, and he helps her learn her stuff. Because it's not easy, is it? So, like I said, I'm proud of the role model <clears throat> that he has been. And uh, that's what being a Don's all about. When we, uh, when we get promoted to second Don and to third Don, we do white stripes on, the, on, the, on their midnight blue belt. The reason we do the white stripes is because we say that the job of a black belt or a don is to pass 
their knowledge down to you guys and to help you become better martial artists. Well, Scott's been doing that since he was since he was a green belt. Any of you guys besides Mr. Siegel can raise your hand and say he's never helped you with anything? Okay, there's none of, none of you can. All right, um, but the reason we use the white stripe is because all that knowledge you're supposed to pass down all the way down to the white belt level, start it back over again so they can grow. It's like uh, planting seeds. The white stripes, uh, your knowledge is the seeds. And Scott has done a fine job so far of planting and tending, and tending the garden. And I expect nothing less from him going forward. And uh, I, I expect very soon that underneath his association patch for him to have a, an assistant instructor patch and one day to have a Chilson impact, saying that he is a certified instructor. I, I expect to see that. And I, I hope that I do get the chance to see that. I know I'm going to offer it to him if he wants it at some point. Not yet, <laughs> but at some point. So without saying anything else, because I gotta save some tears for Salem. <laughs> Having completed all requirements as set forth by the American Tongsudo Tong Association, it is my privilege to promote Scott Gildon to the rank of Chodan and award him his midnight blue belt in Tongsudo. on the posters uh, as you were coming in or not. I was looking at them earlier. I don't remember you being that little. <laughs> but obviously you were, because you're in a Tongsudo uniform. You got, uh, you know, everything. Uh, when you were a white belt, you, you couldn't have been more than this tall. Okay? Um, I, I don't remember you being that young. But, you're how old now? 11? So four years ago, you were in seven. That's about right. So, you know, Michael, you're six, right, Michael? No. When's your birthday? September. September, you'll be seven. Okay. So, yeah, you're about, about the same size as Michael when you started. Um, the thing I did, I remember the most about Sailor when she first started was thinking, man, she's hard-headed. <laughs> um, she is still hard-headed. But the second thing that, that I remember thinking about her was, man, she's got potential. She has so much potential, even as a white belt. And watching her as a white belt kick higher than orange belts and green belts were doing and um, showing more dedication than some of them to me it was just phenomenal my only thought at that point was god i hope she never stops um, even you know when you graduate high school and you go off to college i hope you're able to find somewhere that you can continue training because there's so much more to come out of you than what you've shown so far. And I'm, I hope 
that I can be a part of that for as long as possible because I'm I'm, um, I'm constantly amazed with all my students um, and you sometimes just blow my mind um, so I am very happy to have been a part of your talks of journey. And um, I look forward to great things from you too. Sayla is a good example um, of how to do things correctly. Um, she, uh, I think of all of my current students you were the first one to ever take first place in forms, weren't you? I think so too. At, at the red belt level. At red belt level. <clears throat> Other people had taken first place in forms. I think you took first place in forms at some point. No? I don't think so. Oh, okay. Well, no, I was trying to give you credit. <laughs> Lucy? Oh, Lucy took first place in forms. Okay. It's, uh, but at red belt level, and especially at pre-Don level, it is very challenging. Um, I always tell my students before going to a tournament, if you want to take first place, then forget everything else and do this form the way I'm fixing to tell you how to do it right now. And she listened. And she took first place against other people. Some against, um, <clears throat> I think, didn't you have some, some Chodan Bows that you were going up against? Uh, what, she, what Chodan Bow is, technically it's the same rank as what she was already, which is uh, our, our pre dime when we do the, all the stripes on the red belt. Once they get two stripes on the red belt, that's first go. And then the next two stripes after that, they have to take their Don test. In order, to, in order to get promoted to Don, they have to take their Don test three times. They have to take two pre-tests and then take the official test. So they spend, what was it, a year and a half, almost, as a first go. Um, the other association that we go to the, <clears throat> to the tournaments with they do what they call a chodan bow, where they actually give them a, a, a blue belt. Instead of doing the pretest, they have to take their pretest. If they pass it, they get a blue belt. Um, and then they, you know, have to take a couple of recerts, and then they take their actual don test, and they get a black belt. They, this association uses black belts, and that's when they get the trim on their uniform and everything. Um, when they get their Chodan bow, their blue belt, they don't get trim on their uniform. They just wear a white uniform like uh, the lower guffs have here with no trim on it and a blue belt. Um, we're of the opinion that if they pass that test, when they get this belt, they're a dime. There's no more Chodan bow. So we don't do that. We do first guff with a couple of pre-tests, and then when you test for dime, you're testing for dime. And that's it, no matter what the age. We don't make them take another test to get their official don, because that other association, they have to take another test after they've been a Chodan Bow for a year or more to get their actual black belt and their, and their trim uniform. Uh, we don't do that. So technically they're the same rank as you, however, um, they've already, uh, you know, they're, they're cons considered closer to dons and we don't, so. I think it's an, uh, an accomplishment to actually beat them on out on forms because they were doing dot level forms where we, uh, she was just doing gut level forms. So um, I know that everybody wants to get busy on the other stuff so we can get out of here for the night, but I want to uh, to go ahead and award her her belt. So Having completed all requirements set forth by the American Tom Sudo Association, it is my privilege to promote Sailor Grace to the rank of Chodan and award her her midnight blue belt in Tom Sudo.
So we got one more thing we want to do real quick. Uh, these guys have worked very hard to uh, to get ready for this test and to and, and to earn this privilege of getting promoted. Um, and they wanted to say a special thank you to someone. And this person that they wanted to say thank you to has worked really hard too in helping them get ready. Uh, they they trained together. They um, trained together here at the school, the previous location. They trained together at home, in the garages, out in the yard, in the house. Um, and they spent many weekends together, from what I understand, training to get ready for these tests. So they wanted to show how much they appreciate this person by uh, giving them a little something. And this person that they want to thank is Mr. Tommy Siegel. Tommy, if you'll come up here. Now? Yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, 